In this chapter, we'll get an introduction to lighting in 3ds Max. To see accurate feedback when we set up lights, we can run an interactive production rendering. The nitrous viewport gives a pretty good approximation of scene lighting, but it does not support ray tracing. That means there's no bounce light or proper reflections, and there are other limitations. When adjusting lighting, we should preview the results in our final production renderer. The default production renderer in 3ds Max 2021 is Arnold. Now we're going to set it up to render interactively. When we make changes to our lighting, Arnold will update instantly. Let's go into the Render Setup dialog. On the main toolbar, we've got some teapot icons. Render Setup is the one that looks like a teapot with a gear. Up at the top is a pull-down labeled Target. When we choose a different option from that pull-down list, then the settings we apply down here will apply to that target mode. The default mode is production rendering, which is for offline rendering of single frames to disk. Interactive production rendering in Max is called Active Shade. Let's switch the target mode over to Active Shade mode. Then we need to choose a renderer. The default is Arnold. We can see there are a couple of other options here. We'll talk more about this when we get to rendering. The scanline renderer is the legacy renderer. And ART, or ART, is for compatibility with other Autodesk applications. We do want Arnold as our active shade renderer. We want to make a couple quick adjustments to the system tab over here. These are the processing settings and options for Arnold. We want to enable legacy 3ds Max map support so that Arnold will actually render any 3ds Max maps. So turn that on. And down here we see threads. This section lets us control how Arnold uses the computer CPU. We can set it up to allow some processing overhead so that other operations in 3ds Max won't be slowed down. When auto detect threads is enabled, then Arnold will use all available threads, or the equivalent of all available virtual cores. You should know how many cores you have, or specifically how many virtual cores you have, on your Windows computer. I've got a quad-core processor with hyper-threading enabled, which allows eight threads. I want to leave two threads open, and that way we won't have any issues with interactivity in Max. The way to do that is to disable auto-detect threads and set the number of threads manually. Since I've got eight threads available, if I set this to a value of six, then I would leave two threads open for other processes. But there's an easier way to do that. If we set threads to a negative value, we'll subtract that number from the total number of threads used. If I set the threads value to negative two, now Arnold will use 8 minus 2 threads, or 6 threads. Now, of course, if you have a different number of cores or virtual cores on your machine, you might want to set these values differently. But for Active Shade, it is recommended to leave two threads open. Otherwise, you may have some issues with interactivity. So this is what I recommend for most users. OK, we can initiate the Active Shade window using the resolution set in the common tab as we saw previously. We can either click on the big render button or we can click on the render button on the main toolbar, which now looks like a teapot with a little play symbol or a triangle there. So either way, I can click here or here and that launches the active shade window. Okay, I can close the render setup. If we change anything in our scene in this viewport, then we will see that change update immediately in the Active Shade window. So we can pan around with the middle mouse button, and we can see that Arnold re renders that shot immediately. Or we could select an object and grab the Move tool and reposition that, and Arnold updates immediately. OK, I'll undo that movement. There's an even more intuitive way to use Active Shade. We can load it directly into a viewport. I'll close this Active Shade window because Arnold cannot update in more than one window or panel at the same time. Before launching Active Shade in a viewport, just be aware that size matters. A high viewport resolution will have an adverse effect on interactivity. 
if you have a large area for the viewport, you're going to introduce latency when you try to navigate or change scene parameters. So it works best in a small viewport like this one. In the viewport menu, the third menu is the shading menu, and mine currently says user defined. Click on that and simply choose active shade from the top of the menu. And it might take a moment to update, but now we've got active shade running directly in the viewport. And as we can see, we've got lights, cameras, and the ability to select and move objects just like in any ordinary viewport. In the active shade window, we did not have the ability to preview lights and cameras. Also, if we switch into another mode such as wireframe, we will see that superimposed here. If you want to get an image that's virtually identical to a final production render, then you do want to have default shading. To exit out of Active Shade, you just turn it back off from the same menu. Turn that off, and that is how to choose a renderer for Active Shade and do an interactive production rendering in a floating window or directly in the viewport.